what Gordon is quoting from here to be able to say that Jefferson did, as he puts it, Jefferson studied not only Locke's governmental and legal writings, but also his theological texts. And when he quotes this whole thing, uh, you know, of course, ending with uh, that, um, the defects in good work shall not be supplied by a faith in Muhammad or Buddha, well, the, foe, the, the old name for Buddha, or any other except Christ. Okay, so that sounds all religious. That sounds like Jefferson's agreeing with, with Locke, and Locke was religious, and this and that. What, what Barton is quoting here is from Jefferson's Notes on Religion from 1776. What um, Jefferson's Notes on Religion in 1776 uh, he actually, and it says it in the in the note in this this uh, early edition of, of Jefferson's writings here, that which is the one that Barton was using. Um, uh, that's what's in his uh, footnotes. He's got lots of footnotes. Um, the the footnote here in in this edition that, of Jefferson's writings that Barton used is uh, these no on religion are endorsed by Jefferson, quote, scraps early in the Revolution. They were probably materials and notes for his speeches in the House of Delegates on the petitions for the disestablishment of the Episcopal Church. Owing to the reminding, it is practically impossible to say if any order was in doubt. Okay, the pages are out of order. Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, going to the, um, the page that... Uh, well, I'll we'll skip the page of Barton quoted because basically he just ch chose a chunk and did some editing of it, whatever, to for his purposes. But let's get to the part that explains here why Jefferson was using this. This is like Jefferson's conclusion here, and he's saying of Locke. He says he says, "quote Neither pagan nor Mohammedan nor Jew ought to be excluded from." the civil rights of the commonwealth because of his religion. Now he ends quoting Locke here, and this is Jefferson's words. Shall we suffer a pagan to deal with us and not suffer him to pray to his God? Why have Christians been distinguished above all people who have ever lived for persecutions? <laughs> it is because it is, oh, is it because it is the genius of their religion? No, its genius is the reverse. It is the refusing toleration to those of a different opinion, which has produced all the bustles and wars on account of religion. It was the misfortune of mankind that during the darker centuries, the Christian priests, following their ambition and avarice, combining with the magistrate to divide the spoils of the people could establish the notion that schismatics might be ousted of their possessions and destroyed. This notion we have not yet cleared ourselves from. This is right when this is, a, this is before the church was disestablished in Virginia. This is Jefferson developing his arguments. Okay. In this case, no wonder the oppressed should rebel. And they will continue to rebel and raise disturbance until their civil rights are fully restored to them and all partial distinctions, exclusions, and incapacitations removed. So that, my friends, is what Thomas Jefferson was reading. But of course, Barton says this is from a theological text. When the hell are we going to get to the University of Virginia, which is what this damn chapter is supposed to be about? Uh, okay, now, Barton's got here uh, a bunch of the schools. I wish he'd eventually get to the University of Virginia, but uh, a bunch of the... Uh, Jefferson was involved in quite a few schools, plans for schools, uh, whatever. Um, and one of them is uh, the Geneva Academy. Lie. I'm going to first read what, what's in Barton's book. In 1794, after Jefferson had returned home, back to Virginia, from serving as Secretary of State for President George Washington, he contacted a member of the Virginia legislature about bringing the Geneva Academy from Europe to Virginia. The Geneva Academy was established in 1559 by Reformation theologian John Calvin. 
In this school, the Bible was an indispensable textbook and the students from the school became missionaries all over Europe. And Jefferson wanted to bring this famous religious school to his state. Okay. Again, I'm, I'm going to read from my book. Barton has read this book. Okay. Uh, in my book, I have quoted the, uh, uh, the, the James Kennedy version of that lie, um, which was uh, Jefferson, quote, wanted to bring the entire faculty of Calvin's Theological Seminary over from Geneva, Switzerland, and establish them at the University of Virginia. Now, D. James Kennedy, like, like, didn't know enough about this crap to get the lies right, which makes his versions of them just way, way out there, even further than Barton's stories are way out there. Um, I'm just, so again, I'm going to read and I'll be saying Kennedy because I was, I was debunking the D. James Kennedy version, but it's the same, same line. Okay. There are two things wrong with Kennedy's claim. The first is the time frame. Uh, and when I won't get into that because that's just referring to uh, uh, the, it not being about the University of Virginia. Uh, okay, the second, okay, this is the, what Barton has, okay. The second is that although the Geneva Academy was originally founded by John Calvin in 1559 as a theological seminary, by the late 1700s it had been transformed into an academy of science. The plan considered by Jefferson was not to import a religious school. It was to import a group of Europe's top science professors. Uh, in a letter to George Washington, who was also anxious to establish a public university in America, Jefferson described the Geneva Academy and its faculty. So here's the letter that Jefferson wrote to George Washington. The colleges of Geneva and Edinburgh, and of course Edinburgh was the, the medical school of the time, it was like the medical school, that's where doctors uh, from America studied and then came back to America. Okay, uh, Geneva and Edinburgh were considered as the two eyes of Europe in matters of science insomuch that no other pretended any rivalship with either. Edinburgh has been the most famous in medicine during the, the life of Cullen, but Geneva most so in the other branches of science. Here's the list, uh, I just want to read this entire letter here, uh, the list of what each of the professors that constituted that faculty that Jefferson was going to bring over. And again, still from the same letter to George Washington explaining what this faculty was. Uh, so we have a guy who wrote the analytic table for the encyclopedists and which sufficiently proves his comprehensive science. Uh, next guy for his ad measurements of a degree and other works, professor of natural philosophy. So you got a ma mathematician, natural philosophy guy. Okay, uh, that guy's brother, who he just says uh, is also great. He doesn't specify what science that one is. Uh, then again, uh, a guy, uh, natural philosophy and meteorology, uh, and also the translator of the Greek tragedies. That was one guy. Uh, two guys that he groups together saying both mathematicians and said to be inferior to nobody in that line except Lagrange, who is without an equal. Uh, another one that he just doesn't specify the science, but that he is highly spoken of. And uh, uh, a former professor and his son... Oh, who, who left the college to have more leisure to pursue his geological researches into the Alps, by which work he is very advantageously known. So that was the description of the faculty of the Geneva Academy in 1794 when Thomas Jefferson wanted them uh, to try to bring them over to be the foundation of an American university. So, so going back, let's repeat here what, what, what Barton said about that faculty. Okay, he said, In this school, the Bible was an indispensable textbook, and stu students from the school became missionaries all over Europe, and Jefferson wanted to bring this famous religious school to his state. Yeah, did that sound like a religious school there? What, what Jefferson wrote to Washington?
this is another good one. Okay. Uh, this is one that you had about a school that Jefferson had nothing to do with, uh, but it's a really popular lie, uh, which is also covered in volume one of my book. Okay. In 1804, President Jefferson negotiated the purchase of Louisiana Territory. With authority over that region transferring from the French to the Americans, those living there were uncertain as to what changes might result. Sister Therese Farjan, Mother Superior of a Catholic school and convent in New Orleans, therefore wrote, President Jefferson asking what the status of their religious school would now be under American government. Jefferson responded, your institution, ellipsis, by training up its young members in the way they should go, brackets, Proverbs 22, 6, cannot fail to ensure the patronage of the government it is under. Be assured that it will meet with all the protection my office can give it. Okay, uh, so Je the, it, Barton doesn't have a, a long version of that lie in there, but this is a school that, that Thomas Jefferson had absolutely nothing to do with. The reason the con the, this convent, the Ursuline nuns down in New Orleans, uh, um, contacted him really didn't have to do as much with their school as their property. Uh, people in, in uh, Louisiana Territory were nervous about the deeds to their property. You know, these, these nuns, they were like really, really sharp businesswomen on top of, of being nuns. And they wanted it in writing from Congress that um, their property would be protected. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to go into this whole story here because I'm still waiting for the turn to get to the damn University of Virginia, which is what this chapter is supposed to be about, and we're kind of close to the end, oh, okay, pretty close to the end of the chapter. Uh, okay, oh, another one, uh, 1805, Jefferson was elected head of the uh, Board of Trustees for the brand new Washington, D.C. public schools. He told the city council that he'd be willing to undertake the duties proposed, yada, 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 yada. Uh, this, this is the one about, um, uh, there was a school uh, a public school in, in Washington, D.C. that uh, used uh, the Bible and uh, Watts hymns as their, their reading texts. Um, and there was a report in, I believe, 1813 uh, from the guy who ran one of these schools saying that th this was uh, how the students were progressing in their reading, okay? But that was in like 1813, right? Jefferson w wasn't president anymore. He wasn't on the school board. He, uh, he, he wasn't even involved in this when, when he was the president of the United States and on the school board. He was the president of the United States. This is kind of an honorary uh, title, president of the school board. Uh, but they've constructed this like whole lie about it. And of course, Barton quotes the... Um, uh, the, the report from 1813, is it, was it 1813? Maybe I should check Barton's footnote. <laughs> Maybe I should check uh, my book because, see, Barton's footnote does have the book that, that this comes from, but it doesn't indicate, uh, because the book was written later, so it doesn't, in like 1876, the history of public schools in Washington, D.C., so nowhere does Barton say that this, the date of what he's quoting, leading his readers to assume that this happened in 1805 when, when Jefferson was elected the, uh, the head of the school board. So uh, let, me, let me look in my book, because uh, I, I know I quote this and I do give the date of this. Oh, okay, I was right, yeah, 1813. So, so what Barton is uh, quoting here is it is from a report of uh, the teacher of one of the schools in Washington, D.C. Uh, okay, so the report of the, uh, the schools was that 55 have learned to read in the Old and New Testaments and are able to spell words of three, four, and five syllables. 26 are now learning to read Dr. Watts' hymns and spell words of two syllables. 10 are learning words of four and five letters of 59 out of the whole number, admit, blah, 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 blah. So what it's saying is they were using religious books, the Bible and uh, another religious book, as their reading texts. Okay.